Hello beautiful starseeds, welcome to Starseed Energetics. My name is Ashtara, mission to bring you some of the highest frequency content. And today we have a pick a card reading for you, but this is not just a pick a card reading, this is also an energy transmission. And today is quite special because we're going to be transferring energy and relaying messages, any calibrations from your ideal self that already exists in your peripheral parallel universe. I know that most of us are humans or at least having a human experience. No matter where you are at in your journey or how far you've come, we're programmed to want the next step, the next level, the next attainment, the next achievement. So whatever it is that you're trying to manifest, I want to help you really connect to the full arrival level of yourself that has already accomplished this, that has already manifested this and do an energy transfer as well as any messages that can come through to you so that you can activate that version of yourself right here and right now Before so we begin yeah. just ground your energy coming into the stillness of your heart you know you can instantly invoke this stillness of your heart now connect with your cosmic level of being your supreme level of being in your source field and from this space tune into the alternate reality version of yourself that feels alternate but it's actually being called activating you right now just notice the fact that this is a sign you watching this video is a sign that that version of you is activating within this current reality right now it is the time so just feel that self activating through all of your cells of your body in your physical level of being in your blood chemistry in the water molecules in your entire body just let that vibrate with this frequency of that ideal version of yourself that already is your dream self so with that energy let's get into the card selection hello beautiful star seeds who chose pile number one slash this pink dragon harmony this is going to be your message and before i begin i just want to share with you that this pick a card reading which i've done so many different pick a cards and card readings in the past it was one of the one of the most difficult videos to film because there were so many distractions <laughs> and i know it's really funny you can see the reflection of me here um but here i am i finally made it through the initiation and i'm really grateful to conduct this reading and so the first and foremost pile that i'm doing i feel like this message is for you that it, it just feels to me like you've been struggling to get to where you are so the aspect of yourself that you're actually transferring from your ideal self into your current level of being is this energy of feminine grace and receptivity and things being harmonious and easy and a lot of people tend to forget if they've been raised in a certain environment or a specific kind of culture that really idealizes this the hustle and the striving to get somewhere or that masculine approach of aggressively going after what it is that you want that has been a paradigm in the past like this warrior mentality um the aspect the frequency transmission that you're getting now is this other way of doing things this divinely graceful divinely flowing way of allowing things to happen and knowing that out of the infinite possibilities available for you in the universe there are always harmonious ways that is less resistance that is less difficult that is less controlling that that there is always like an alternative way that something can work out that doesn't have to be so difficult and the feeling that i get with you even just from this card and the the how I even got to this reading and how I even got to this point, I feel like you really have to open up and invite this wave of grace, this wave of ease. And you might be wondering, well, how do I do that? But the whole point of that frequency is not to do that. 
you just let it happen you just allow it to happen um and just your willingness to address that that is a possibility and just your willingness to open up to that level of assistance or that level of receptivity is 90% of the procedure. So for example, if there's something that you've been really trying to achieve or really trying to control or uh, attain some sort of an outcome and you've just been striving and kind of grabbing it by the throat this is the frequency that is being transmitted to you through this um, alternate level of yourself that has already accomplished this is transferring to you this field of grace this field of feminine receptivity and you know feminine energy as something that can really soothe and nurture and just be open to how differently things can work out when you intend and when you just simply choose that this is the way you would like to go about it. So you can always choose what it is that you want to accomplish, what it is that you want to manifest. That's a very human trait and it's no problem with that. But at a certain point, you get to play with other polarities of how things get to come about. Um, and this, I feel, is almost like so overdue for you to let yourself experience this. And, and you might be like, what did I do to deserve that kind of ease? But it's the whole point is that you don't need to do anything to deserve it. You just choose that path. You just open up to that path. All right, let's see what the cards are for you. We have the Age of Light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. We have Wolf Spirit, family. We have uh, Butterfly Spirit, transformation. Bee Spirit, prosperity. Um, then we have the Chariot. The Star. The hanged man. The last card here is the page of wands. Is this gonna fit? Page of wands. And more final oracle cards. We have crown chakra updates. Star being healing codes. Higher heart activation. Dropping shields, divine love, your heart is healed. So this might be a rare message for you to come across. Um, but your heart is finally healed. And you might be, you might have had a lot of purges around this. And needing to let go of family issues and family wounds. And, and really willing to release and forgive and uh, let go of any narratives associated with your family. And there is this thing that when you adopt a specific outcome, right? Like when you're living the end state of your ideal reality, as this this car, this reading is basically all around embodying that ideal level of self in the here and now. And what is it that is occurring as a result of that? Um, what energies are being transformed? What energies are being transmitted from this? Which is actually occurring because if, if it's not occurring, you wouldn't even be tuned into this reading. You wouldn't be having your attention in this reading at all. So this is actually a confirmation, you know, that you really are embodying that level of self. But it just feels like there's this... I'm going to put this right here and switch that around. It finally feels like you've healed your heart. And there is this notion of the heart energy being so difficult to heal. There's like that subconscious mind programming that goes around in the spiritual community that somehow it's very difficult to have a healed heart that... Um, you need years and years and decades and decades of work to be able to achieve that. But this is finally you taking on that context of your heart is actually healed. And 
you can actually tell yourself a different story about the environment that you grew up in and the family that you grew up in. You can consciously, for your own sake, rewire the story that you keep telling yourself about what kind of family that you grew up with, what kind of environment and how it has hindered you. If you just will take and catch those conversations that are actually very subconscious at times and um, sometimes you don't even know what's going on in the background, but it's actually going on in the background. You're quite... um, often resentful of what happened within your family dynamics or even um, as your family the definition of family grows as you grow up I mean you would even consider some of your friends as your family as you grow up I mean all of those different uh, scenarios that you'd been able you haven't been able to totally let go of um, you're in the process of rewiring the way that you tell yourself that story because when you change the story and when you stop viewing yourself as a victim of all the circumstances that you've had to go through a profound transformation occurs that you rewire your identity to that next level and the funny thing is i mean just whatever this ideal reality is i mean i want you to tune into that reality or that identity of the level of yourself that has literally accomplished all the achievements beyond your wildest dreams i don't even know what that would be for you but just imagine a version of yourself that has accomplished everything you could possibly dream of and more and just tune into the feeling of that already being done in your reality now because that's what really is occurring energetically and then you will see it unfold outwards but Actually, when you tune into that level of healing, of having accomplished those levels, and then you look back at your childhood or you look back at all the things that happened on the way, you will actually quite literally never feel victimized about what happened in the past um, because of all that you've been able to accomplish. Um, And you will realize that that past was just a natural process of everything working out in the highest way and if you still hold resentment to anything that happened in the past is actually partially because you haven't achieved the level of self that you wish to achieve and then you get into this blaming mode of the past and oh if this didn't hold me back if that didn't hold me back but Imagine you're embodying the anchoring of this frequency now where you have achieved everything that you could have possibly imagined and more. And from that space, you don't hold grudges. So that healing is occurring right now. Um, And, you know, this is a very divine feminine, divine love kind of frequency. As you can see, all of these um, high heart activations, this profound healing that this level of healing just happens by the way of grace Uh, but this identity that you're starting to embody you know it's something that you've been training for lifetimes like you might really think as i said in the beginning who am i to all of a sudden deserve to get this kind of ease and grace into that level of reality because it's really like you know what it's really like winning the lottery Um, you know, the lottery is just money, but it's really like winning a multi-dimensional lottery of everything you could imagine. And that really here points to, first of all, prosperity, material abundance. Um, and you know, with the B here, it's really like a good sense of community as well, especially with the divine love and wolf spirit. It also really speaks about fulfilling relationships abundance and this butterfly spirit and this uh shell is like aphrodite this is like beauty this is real true pure beauty that just radiates from inside out then we have the star which is like a, a similar frequency of that divine feminine energy and beauty and total and graceful healing this level of yourself uh it's it's actually the essence of what you've been cultivating for many lifetimes in a parallel or past or future life and it's kind of been literally hidden from you until this time because 
um, there just had to be some lessons <laughs> for you to learn on the way. And the life that you lived until now has been quite foreign, to be honest. Uh, the life that you have lived until now is nearly alien to the natural state of being that you're used to existing on multiple levels. Uh, even now, like as a parallel life or any past lives, like you're not used to this level of struggle uh, that you had in this life. I would even say... Um, even being initiated and training in other circumstances and other dimensions, it's never been this difficult for you because you had a certain level of connection to your divine self that was quite cut off in this life at, at a certain point. Um, you know, there's a really deep emphasis on healing that is occurring in your field. So this is not like something that you had to go out and try to do, but this is being done for you on your behalf as this is right now the time and all you actually have to do had to do is open up to the possibility of this just being done on your behalf just being done for you and just the shifts happening on your behalf if you always feel like you have to work for the changes that you want to experience if you feel like you have to work for the achievements that you deserve then you're gonna unfortunately keep perpetuating that paradigm where your belief creates the paradigms where you really do have to work and struggle for what you want but when you just put a pause to all of that and if you have been feeling very tired lately or even like lazy even though it's not really lazy if you've been feeling um you know, like you needed more rest or you couldn't do much or if you didn't, if you haven't been feeling motivated or disciplined as as much as you would have the reason is because you had to really like change the foundations from where you were doing things so people can do 10,000 things a day but if it's coming from the wrong place if it's coming from the wrong energy if it's operating under false belief systems that is not of the highest then it's a waste of 10,000 different tasks but I feel like you had to put a stop to this for, for a minute like and really re-evaluate re uh, everything. And in that case, even like two, three things that you do becomes hyper effective in comparison to 10,000 different things that you could have done with a wrong mindset, with a wrong intention, with the wrong energy. Um, there's no right or wrong, but you know what I mean? Misaligned is what I mean by that. So if you have been really wanting to call in this level of prosperity and connection i feel like there's this sense of deep frustration and wounding that has been purging for you and it's actually healing you know it's you you really went through it with enough observation that a lot of the stagnant energy that has been um in in the progress of things <laughs> is now finally coming to a good movement um and, and a deep 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 healing this I would say this is a, a irreversible level of healing that you are just totally a different person. Um, you really are welcoming in this this uh, this divine feminine way of relating to the way you navigate your life, and this obviously is the great central theme of the collective. Um, to switch from that hyper masculine hyper aggressive way of doing things into really truly surrendering to the flow of things but for you this has recently been and this currently is through this portal um even through this reading is probably the ce central epitome of you gathering all of your energies together to assimilate everything that has occurred you know, birthing into a new self that is totally healed. So, wow. And as you can see, there's so many images of taking flight here. Like, so let me just put those together uh, right here. It's like so many different creatures that are flying. This dove, this butterfly, dragon, this bee. So if you've been feeling like stuck and 
tied to the ground, you're going to begin to take flight. And all of these images is like, not like in the midst of flying, but this is like beginning to fly. All these four images, I actually want to put this away so you can focus on these images. It's like beginning to take flight. You're just beginning to take flight. And I feel like you're naturally uh, kind of being who flies. Say your natural essence is flight. You're a flyer. <laughs> you are probably in other dimensions, like a deep level of wanderer who doesn't really have an anchored star system, but you're just like this floating, energetic, bioluminescent being. And it's as if when you came into this life, you were forced to be a ground creature. That's literally the feeling that I get that you were not able to be the true nature of who you are uh, until this point and you're finally beginning to take flight in the beginning stages and you're going to feel so free um and this is something that you really are and for a moment there you started doubting yourself like maybe i'll never fly but you're a flyer you're the one who flies so so there's going to be movement, um, but and I do believe that it's going to take off in its own divine timing, the speed. But this from here onwards is like going to be some of the best restorative experiences that you will have as you learn to recover the true nature of yourself from this bound up being that you were not able to truly feel the essence of who you are and what you're doing. Um, and even, you know, that level of prosperity or the community that you'll get to enjoy, that was always your natural state of being. You were never meant to be uh, repressed from any of those freedoms. So yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed this transmission and the stream of consciousness and frequencies that came through from your ideal level of self. I hope you enjoy the process of integrating this session and enjoy your flight. Okay. Hello, beautiful starseeds who picked this card, Asclepius. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but essentially this card is signaling that you are on a cusp of a very deep transformation. And so this ideal self that you're tuning into it does have facets of frequencies. Uh, it does have facets of frequencies that you are imagining, but a large part of this self that you're downloading that is so beyond your uh, grasp of what you can even imagine. So there's going to be a lot of surprises, good surprises, but you're not going to be expecting things to look like and feel like and end up like this it's like the divine synchronicities of how uh you turn out is going to be so much more than what you can think of so there are specific manifestations that you're calling in or the version of yourself that you're calling in and it's just so much so much more than what you can think um this dragon spirit is also actually the spirit of the shaman or the healer so you have that deeply as an aspect of the person you are becoming um maybe you already are in the healing arts or interested in shamanic arts or actually this also has that spirit of connecting with the earth and connecting with the plant kingdom so if, if you are interested or have been thinking about plant medicine at some point um that is relevant to you and somehow not even if that you have to necessarily go and do it but it's like there's some sort of connection that the plant kingdom has with you um it could be any sort of any form of plant but especially like plant teachers and the intelligence of these plants that are co-creating with humanity at a higher level right so let's get into your oracle cards we have meandering pathway flow dance with life do something to change your energy so immediately what i see is that uh 
this flowing movement or like the dance it would really help you integrate into this level so if you don't have a movement practice that is more flowy or like more dancey uh, a little less restricted so for example if you do like disciplined practice that has specific movements like yoga or qigong this is an invitation for you to break out of that mold like even if you do resistance training or any of those things try to go for a more flowing movement where you don't plan the sequence um so whether that be dance or just shaking yourself like shaking like shaking your whole body to shake off energy things like that will really help you but what it also is saying is like it is so essential for you to be flexible and open-minded more than ever before because this form that you are anchoring in this form that you're becoming is so unpredictable it is just not something that you can even plan or imagine so uh, just be flexible and physically moving in a flexible way or unpredictable way is going to help you anchor this energy in and it's actually happening now that's why we're speaking about it um but do things that break your pattern uh do things that really take you out of your comfort zone i will give you a couple of examples like you can go to a cold plunge like a sauna and a you know that biohacking facilities that have cold plunge that is total habit breaking um even if you do it already just focusing on the fact that when you change the temperature you're breaking the patterns of your you know room temperature self so something like that can really help or like you know taking a last minute travel so not planning a travel like oh i'm gonna go here next month but like literally deciding last minute okay i want to go here and then just just go you know um just book a hotel for that day and just go that kind of stuff will help you really keep flexible and th- this is another thing if you happen to live in a country where the weather doesn't change that much especially pay attention to uh changing your temperature by things like going to a sauna or a cold plunge or both or the cryo chambers you know um but the thing is that uh you the the thing that you're becoming the identity that you're becoming is really outside of the cognitive spectrum of even you like i know you're imaginative imaginative and you think you are so outside of the box but the person you're becoming is so so outside of even the tesseract like this is just not something that the human mind can entirely grasp i know this is like interesting uh but i will tell you this uh i'm a big fan of yin yoga if you're not a practitioner of yin yoga please try it because yin yoga stretches your fascia and it really will help you uh get flexible in a way that you possibly cannot do in other ways so basically it's like stretches that you hold for 3 to 5 minutes you can search yin yoga on youtube you'll get tons of results we have here patience and renewal so right now i feel like ugh, you've been actually going through a turbulence of energetic shifts and you need to have more i'm not going to sit here and say you need to do this you need to do that but what i mean is i suggest that you have more patience for how you turn out because i feel like you had like these straight goals you know those memes that have uh you were trying to get from point a to point b and you think the journey is straight but the journey is actually like you know unpredictable that's literally what i see is like you have all these goals and then you just want it to go straight but the reason why it's always taking another turn is because what is coming out is so multifaceted and so you know i hope you can give yourself more time and space to recalibrate and renew because the energies that you often integrate are really high intensity shifts um so we have three of swords uh <laughs> wheel of fortune and lovers so like wait there's one one more card death this is really intense energies when it comes to a relationship it could be a relationship or just relationships in general I feel that this paradigm of you holding on to all these um narratives around relationships are coming to a swift 
clothes. And this is not something that you get to choose how... I mean, of course, you get to choose in terms of how easy it gets to be. That's the funny thing. But you are done experiencing difficult relationships. And this will macrocosmically carry out. And there could possibly be some sort of an ending to any of the relationships that you have. Um, I don't exactly know which ones, but that's really also I recommend releasing control over which relationship stays and goes. But this is so macrocosmic. This is just happening for you. It's on your behalf. There's going to be an ending to any energies that are not conducive for you to welcome in this new self. And this energy is so strong that this is like a point in your life where you are literally on a soul level contract it to move on from all relationships that is not in alignment so that you can just enjoy a supportive environment for you to thrive in. So, um, you don't have to worry about taking any sort of dramatic action to try to do this on your own because, again, the energies that is carrying this out, this energy out, it's like really coming from a universal energetic flow, like a cosmic push, and it's just gonna blow away anything that doesn't serve you in your environment. Um, and it's not like set in stone, but this is more like the people in your environment are going to go through some sort of energetic initiation and what remains will remain. Last but not least, we have the card Holy Grail, Akashic Records. And Gaia Gateway Activation. So with this, that jumps out to me first is the fact that we've been talking about your connection with the plant kingdom. And also with this like foresty card and with this shamanic card, I feel like you are really... Uh, deeply in tune with the earth's consciousness of course everyone is but you have a way of communicating with the earth's frequencies to a level where you can directly download messages from the earth and like to the intricate details you have a profound connection with the it's almost like i would ask you to communicate with earth every single day instead of like turning to your higher guides all the time i mean like yeah sure that's cool like your galactic team angelic whatever um but please add on that list when you're connecting connect with the earth's consciousness because you you really have a deep connection with the consciousness of the earth and the multiple dimensions of the earth you're actually one with like a, a higher dimension of the earth at, at a specific level and you have this access to her akashic field to a degree that is 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 graced upon you because you are pure enough to handle it what actually means is that you can access and activate any part of the akashic records around the earth's collective field um but in any case i feel that earth the spirit of the the frequency of the earth and the central core of the earth the central intelligence of the earth is speaking with you all the time so i would ask you because you know if you don't really go ahead to distinguish where the guidance is coming from i would like to ask if you can start to discern the different levels of guidance and try to learn the voice of the earth so for example let's say that you're getting like an intuitive guidance from like a higher aspect of yourself or the galactic team or the angelic council 
but which one is the earth which voice which intuitive voice is coming from the earth i would love for you to get to know that voice and just know that you have infinite support from the earth especially when it comes to situations that feel difficult especially when it comes to even earthly matters that feel difficult you can connect and directly receive a transmutation and i know that everyone at this level knows that you can ground your energy and transmute and release energies but i feel like when you're actually going through a specific field of density or collective emotions that you like soak up like a sponge and then you sometimes like just hold on to it in your field as if you have to deal with it or that you have to transmute it yourself but whenever you go through a pocket of of density in your emotional field or whatnot you can directly connect with the earth's consciousness and request assistance and i've even though you know this you don't do it enough so that's uh that's the message there and just tune into the earth now and ask for a message i mean like you can pause the video and do that right now or just wait until the end or whatever. So the final message that I have is um, around all of these, you know, around the earth, the earth's consciousness, the plants. First of all, ask yourself, how can you get um, a deeper intimacy with a plant kingdom? At the stage of evolution that you're going through now, you can intuitively request any suggestions on how to communicate with the plant kingdom or what you can do to deepen that intimacy between yourself and the plant kingdom. And you can also ask any geolocational fields that is of the highest for you to anchor into and you can travel there but this is really feels to me like it would be a great time to travel <laughs> okay i really hope this has been helpful i hope you enjoy the transmission and i hope you enjoy the integration of these frequencies that are coming through for you Sending so much love. I'll see you in the next video. Or you can check out my Patreon if you want some extra readings from me. Bye-bye. Hello, beautiful starseed who chose Pal 3. This is the Father Time card. And this is going to be your transmission from the ideal self. And the main transmission that you're getting from that ideal level of self that has already accomplished everything that you could imagine is actually your perception on time. If you have yet to watch how uh, the, the video that I put out at some point recently around uh, stretching time, please watch that after this video. Uh, it will help you recalibrate your sense of time. But the main message is this. It looks like you are way too stressed about time and you're perceiving it in a very distorted and outdated way that is no longer in alignment with this new level of self that you're becoming. So the number one difference between this level of self versus you now that is now shifting into the ideal self is the way you perceive time. And obviously, I feel like you're feeling rushed around time because you already want to be and do and accomplish everything that you want to accomplish. But ironically, you have to be that version of yourself now, which means that version of yourself, that version of yourself, that ideal self doesn't stress about time. And there's plenty of abundance of time in that reality because it's already achieved everything that is possibly, <laughs> there is to possibly achieve. And so actually adopting this relaxation will help you calibrate this now. Um, and that bring forth that reality now. Let's see. We have Pleiades, double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. So I can see why uh, you feel this urgency because especially Pleiadian starseeds that I, in my read of energy, Pleiadian starseeds get anxious around time. Because first of all, um, 
their experience of time is drastically different than the human scale, but it's actually in close proximity enough that it just is super disorienting. So for example, if you're like an Andromedan being or like more focused on that uh, conscious stream of Andromeda, their scale of time is so drastically different from the human scale of time that it just like doesn't compute. But if you have a Palladian like conscious dream that is very active, their scale of time or their experience of time is more in proximity to the human scale of time that it does cause a disorientation. And you feel like you have this urgent mission and the sense of urgency ends up getting translated into time. So I can see why, but you, as you learn to be aware of that energy and just let it go, you get the passage to activate that level of yourself that has already done everything. And the question that a lot of people tend to ask when you know, like you're supposed to just, after everything is done, you'll just chill, right? You'll just relax. And that's actually essentially what you want to do. That's why you want to accomplish everything so you can just relax. So actually you can just relax now. And as the law of reality co-creation, that reality will come forth when you can just simply relax and be existing. But then the question that people might ask is, if I'm relaxed, will I have enough motivation to get anything done? But the, the answer is that when you're relaxed, you'll get a few inspired actions very rarely, but those actions will be so hyper effective that they that they're actually more effective than a thousand different things you can do with an anxious mind. When you have this sense of presence, even if you take a, a couple of actions that is inspired and full of this present mind state, it's going to be a lot more effective than this jittery 10,000 different things that you could possibly get done for the sake of productivity. Here we have the Knight of Swords, which describes your energy around time right now. Like you feel like you have to hurry and get things done and rush. And that's the energy that you have. And you know, this energy that you have is like, uh, almost like this survival mode around time and earth. Like you have to get it done or else. That's the kind of feeling that I get from you. And if it does feel like you have a lot of mental anxiety and if you don't identify with having mental anxiety or stress, you're probably so numb to it that you don't even realize it. Judgment, Seraphim's Gateway, Emerald Tablet Activation. Soul star activation. So part of the part of the the anxiety is that you really have a deep soul mission. Um, you know, there's levels to somebody's soul mission. Some people have just like um, a lot of freedom in the mission that they have. Like they can get to sort of pick and choose and have breathing space around their soul mission but some people have a very specific soul mission that they are meant to um, accomplish in this life, like very crucial piece to the puzzle that is very specific to the evolution of humanity and the evolution of time. So that's part of why you feel very anxious to get things done because anxiety is somehow associated with getting things done because humans have been programmed that way but you have to take a moment to step back and realize that's not the most efficient way to actually get things done. So right now what you're getting initiated to do is really learn the art of conscious manifesting. So maybe your mission feels extremely intense and it's like you have this on your back. Like you, you this is a, this is on you. But before you try to get 
this mission accomplished, first things first, the easiest way to do this mission in your lifetime is to really <laughs> master the art of conscious manifesting and this space of calling in divine support. And that's part of the steps of going about your mission instead of feeling like you are on your own, that you have to chase after time. And this is very institutionalized way of perceiving time. So I wouldn't be surprised if you have uh, like higher education or some professional work experience at in an institutional setting. I wouldn't be surprised because the way that you have been programmed to perceive time and getting things done is very, very artificial, like institutionalized artificial. And that did serve a purpose because it gave you this kind of artificial work ethic that you can transmute into this very functional divine activation when you turn it over to your alignment. It's interesting but I really will say that at this point, it's very safe for you to release all of those perspectives and those ways of perceiving accomplishment and time in this artificial construct that was thrown onto you. And part of the thing uh, and part of the other purpose of that was you had to really understand what it is like to be human because of this like very star seedy energy that you have going on here. Um, if you hadn't been conditioned into an institutionalized setting, you would have just been like a floating fairy. And so you did need to really understand why humans are the way they are so that you can really uh, know what in the world you're doing here anyway. Um, so, so I feel like the biggest transmission that you're getting from your ideal self is the sense of serenity and the sense of true presence in time. And, you know, this anxiety that you have going on in your mental field, every time you see it happening, you can simply just call in divine support and learn to perceive your accomplishments and the way that time works in a transmuted way and learn that time can be a tool to really master the art of conscious manifestation, which is what you're learning to do right now. You're really learning how to consciously co-create the reality that is of the divine will. And that's part of your mission, actually. Conscious manifestation is part of your mission. And the the, interesting thing about that is for this level of mission that you are assigned with there's literally the personal desires that you can have as you best uh, as you live your best life that is exactly the same alignment with how to serve the collective on the highest level so prioritize your ideal reality and don't worry too much about like, well, how can I be of service at the same time? It's, it's exactly the same alignment. A version of yourself that could be of the highest service is living the best life you can possibly imagine. So um, it is safe for you to really focus on co-creating your best life, manifesting your best life. But that obviously needs to have a good period of really returning into a level of cognition where you don't even perceive this reality as something that needs to be manifested or the level of your consciousness that that truly simply just observes and that really <laughs> that really spirals into the human consciousness and the multiple levels of your galactic fields as spiritualizing this aspect of consciousness that you have going on right now. Okay, I really hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching this reading. And if you want more exclusive readings from me, you can check out my Patreon. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.